This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 489 in our empty, empty Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Properly social distancing, so hopefully we can have friends in the studio in the near future. Uh, and with us on the line, first of all, socially distant in the big D from Studio C, it is John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru, fancy pants at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going? My, my PSA for tonight is please don't set cell phone towers on fire. No, what the hell? Where did that come from? Jeez. So, I, I actually, I, I have a story for later in the show to talk about that. It's it's one of those conspiracy theories like we were just talking about Listen, on the... Uh, it's been a, it's, it's been like a month of, like, did I really read that headline? But like <laughs> even in all that, that pops up. And it says, you know, 5G, 5G towers caught on fire because of uh, theories about the virus. I'm like, what? That's a leap. Anyways. Anyways, <laughs> beyond that. Shutters is with us. Katie Dudas, how you doing? Good. How are you? And, and the more, you're on, view. Yeah, in the video, she has the view side. She just literally did a 180. And uh, <laughs> got all this cool shit behind me. There was nothing behind I, me before. Oh, let's, let's actually put it on you. There you go. Now everybody can see it. Butters is on like a lazy Susan and she's just <laughs> spinning her around. It'd be great if she just like rotated throughout the show like consistently. It's, it's like a rotating restaurant at the top it's of the, the Ron Swanson desk. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Like, we got Boba back there. You got your Genesis games. So, my Adat, uh, my mm-hmm. Lily looking down on me. Jumping. There you go. There you go. Like, but uh, significantly less cat butt this week. So. Sorry, guys. And we also have with us, I can't not remember the last time he's been on this show, but we finally got him with a Tuesday off where he could get away from the kids or lock himself in a room. I don't know what he ended up doing to, in order to do that, hearing about how things are going over there uh, between Twitter and everything. Doug Durda is with us. Also in the Big D. Also <laughs> in the Big D. You guys are sharing the Big D today. I mean, no, that's not. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, of course, Yins love barbecue and should I drink that dot com. And while I, I don't have Boba Fett, Boba Fett, Boba Fett, I do have something even cooler though. <gasps> what? What was that? So while I'm sitting here, I could have Wolverine fighting a doll. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Now, whose toys are those? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real about this. So I, I actually got this from as a, a care package from Sick Puppy. He sent this to me in the mail. He said, "Hey, I saw this. I hope it would brighten up your day being stuck in the house." And it, it was. I, I thought it was going to be like you know like a head mm-hmm. or something. <laughs> when he said that there's a package coming, he goes, "It's uh, it's something from the show." So I'm like, "Oh man, we've." He really dug deep to find some archive stuff, and mm-hmm. I was getting scared, and it ended up being a dollar. So I'm just glad it wasn't just like a, a bullet with some ketchup. I was <laughs> really scared. I'm like, kids, don't open that. Yeah, yeah. It was like, well, their, the, their tagline way back in the day was "Eat a bullet." So uh, that was all puppy. His, his he, was sick. Yeah, puppy his was. was yes. Eat a bullet. <laughs> so, <laughs> related? Did you see the one where somebody had a Dalek, and and it was, I presume, in an English town. Uh, uh, roaming the streets. It's a full size Dalek roaming the streets, telling everybody to stay inside. Let's see over there. That's that wouldn't be uncommon. Yeah, that's <laughs> just a Wednesday. Over here, they <laughs> over here they might be. Like, eh, all right, well we're kind of weird over here, but eh, it's like an R two. It's like if you had an R two D two doing the same thing, right? It, it, yeah, see, that that's how people would be able to relate. Though there's a big Doctor Who presence in Pittsburgh, so I think oh, more. Yes. 
more than people expect would would recognize a Dalek going around. I mean, now, if it was a Cyberman, I'd just have to go over and trip him because they're as useless as a Stormtrooper. <laughs> That's and right. have the same accuracy. <laughs> It's just like, why am I, wait, why am I afraid of these guys? Okay. Anyways, um, this is the awesome cast where we do pontificate the important questions like we just did about uh, uh, Cybermen. Uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. And uh, you can also please subscribe to the awesome cast on your favorite podcast catcher. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast, at Facebook AwesomeCast, where we're here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We can at least help you keep one day of the week uh, straight if you join us live, because I know that's becoming a problem. I saw at least three times in multiple places, what day is this? Um, so, so we're helping you out. I know it all looks the same. It's the same four walls. We'll get you there, guys. We'll get you there. Um, and also, uh, please... <clears throat> please check out our audio partners, the 405 media.com and post industrial audio at postindustrial.com. Uh, sharing the show, streaming the shows uh, and letting the p- people know about the awesome cast. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Um, you can uh, thank you for supporting the show. Our friends over there at the coffee club le- level, Matt Weller, John DeGore and John Carmen and our friends at the fan of the show level, John, uh, Michael Fedor, Katie's favorite Fedor. And pghmuseums.org. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show and continuing to support the show and help us keep the lights on here at the Sogertron Media Studio. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Let's start with some some fun news. Chilla, you were sharing um you were sharing a little bit before the show of this uh, this one artist. Yeah. So there's a and there's obviously lots of people doing this on YouTube, but there's this guy five times August. Um, and I put a link in the the notes. I also, if you look, I have my ongoing favorites of YouTube coronavirus parodies, um, which five <laughs> times August um, is on quite often. Um, th- this guy, he, he probably about every two to five days comes out with a new parody um, today was a coronavirus uh, parody of uh, Wonderwall. Um, he just did uh, one on Britney Spears, Hit Me One More Time, but it's about getting takeout. Mm-hmm. Um, the We Didn't Start the Virus, Billy Joel parody. Um, he's he's very playful. He's very fun. Um, he ends most of the parodies with, you know, thanks for watching. Remember to wash your hands. Hope you're all being safe. Um, he actually did a live stream. I think it was last Friday, maybe. Um, I think he got a start on, you know, doing his own music, but he's really taken off with subscriptions and people um, based on his coronavirus parodies. If you wait, wait your your playlist is called Corona Time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, but yeah, if you, if if you, if you share out my playlist as well, there's, there's a couple other good ones out there. I've been trying to share my favorites out to the Facebooks, um, as well as trying to get, um, some input from others. So if you have your favorite coronavirus parody song, um, shoot me a link. I'd be happy to add it to my playlist. And it was funny because when I logged on to YouTube to grab the link this afternoon, Mm -hmm. it looks like. Um, Adam Sandler now has a uh, quarantine song that looks like it may have been on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon a couple oh. days back. So he was—he was. I saw the interview from from him being on there. I didn't know he performed something. Yeah. Nice. Um, so and Pittsburgh Dad's been doing some funny stuff with with homeschooling, mm. which I'm sure Dirta would would get a kick out of. <laughs> you guys, but, can, you guys can probably relate to that. Yes. It's so, so, all of my patients at this point, <laughs> which is I'm why I'm eating patients. Rita's because my family feels bad for me right now. <laughs> nice. so there's a knock at the door. And I'm like, Dad, we got you something. Aww. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I, well, I hear I hear some other friends are about to vote people out of the house. So I'm, uh, close to it. I'm glad you're. Well, they're, they're they're saying like divorce rate is up in in China as the. As the virus starts to tape, potentially taper off over there. Oh boy! Um, the divorce rate is like going up because you can get to a lawyer and file after spending <laughs> yes. six well, weeks. It's just a jerk move to do it while it's going on. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm free. I'm allowed to leave the house and move out. Let's go. So, wow. I, yeah, it's going to put everything to the test, right? Including relationships. So, all right, uh, Doug, what is your, uh, what, what's your awesome thing here? Related, speaking of getting out. Kind of sort of getting out, but it's uh, it's more along the lines of homeschooling, too. Uh, digitally getting out, I guess. Digitally, yes, yes. Digitally getting out. So there's this great place for parents to drop their kids off to get edumacated called Snapology. <laughs> okay. And the great thing with Snapology is so th- there's a lot of STEM in, like STEM projects involved mm-hmm. when it comes to Snapology. I love it because... Uh, the kids are learning science and some scientific theory behind also building with Legos, which I don't know, what kid doesn't love Legos? I hate stepping on Legos, but uh, the kid, the kids love Legos. And it's a great way to relate with them. So I think it was within a day or two after they announced that we were, that everyone was going to be staying home. One of the other parents got a hold of me and said, Hey, we're going to have a virtual play date. I'm like, wait, what? I go, well, I just turned my camera on and, like the kids are playing and talking. What, what's the deal? She's like, no, Snapology started this online play date. There's like 15 of us if you join. And it was like $10 for an hour. And like, we're going to, uh, what's the going to build? They were going to oh, study uh, engineering theory. What? I'm like, wait, that's <laughs> what? what I said. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I sat in on the first part of it. And Jill is going to love this because they said, why did Tony Stark build Iron Man's outfit the way they did? And my head went, <laughs> like, I've got to watch this. So she started with the theory of, okay, how did he come up with that design? Why does he have that design? Like, why did he have certain, like, why did he have the flamethrower? And got the kids thinking about it because they all love Avengers. Mm-hmm. So then she said, okay, build your own invention and tell me why it does what it does. And within like 15 minutes, I'm watching these kids between the ages of like six and 11 come up with these insane ideas of like cars and like outfits and superheroes. I'm like, Whoa, how did you just do that? Because I can't get them to shut up about Fortnite and everything else going on (laughs) on YouTube. And some strange lady on the internet's now telling them to, you know, engineer a space, you know, a suit. So the cool thing is they have different programs set up right now. Now, like I said, ours was $10 for an hour, which was absolutely worth it. Uh, the kids sketched out their uh, designs. And they, there's different ones, not just this, but yeah. they sketched out their designs and they built it. I, I'm looking at this and, and I'm, I'm looking at there's a video game design. Uh, yeah, they have. A, I had no idea all this stuff was available there. They have scouts, anti-bullying, uh, competitions, birthdays, robotics, theme programs. Like that's yeah. Cool. So we we've done a few, and I'm like, this, this is fantastic. I will absolutely give you ten dollars mm-hmm. for this because. Not only do you know how to do it, but now after we're done with this, I'm going to build with the kids and we're going to keep on doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I'm sure that they'll they'll build a Boba Fett for Dutters. If they so, ask. <laughs> <laughs> so do they do so they, they do live instruction? Do they have any like the prior ones or prompting like recorded like where you could could I pay 25 bucks for a subscription to their back catalog? That's a great question. I don't know because so, I've only done the live ones. But the, uh, and so they're using Zoom for everything too, which was the first time that I had seen my plug just fell out too. Uh, first time that I, I saw Zoom was being used before the big boom of the boom of Zoom happened. Zoom. Like it's just, it was crazy because she's like, we're gonna get on Zoom. I'm like, all right, well I use that when I worked at a startup, but whatever. And she controlled the instructor controlled the conversation so she could mute and unmute everyone so people weren't talking over each other yeah, because. Yeah. Or you've got 15 kids yelling at one time, look at my yep. yeah. The big you know, tactic when we have one kid on one line when we do one of these shows. So, <laughs> so it, it was just, it was cool to see that they have that available. And now it's, what, three, four weeks later, I'm getting all these emails from businesses saying, hey, we, come join our virtual play dates. Come join our oh, virtual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's virtual. So- and, oh, go ahead. Say I, 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 I'm looking at their thing, and the, the, it does look like live. And there isn't a question like, why wouldn't I just watch the video? And they're they're talking about how their play dates and online classes. So is this a pivot for them? Like this this is a thing you would typically take your kid and go to a location. You would. Yeah, there there used to be one in Bethel Park. I okay. think it closed. I'm I'm not. Or they moved. Uh, and my kids were pretty heartbroken when we drove by and saw the sign wasn't there because it's there was. A lot of birthday parties there, and they would. The other cool thing was they would also sanitize all the Legos. Mm-hmm. So this is like oh. you know pre all this. 
they were still very thorough with cleaning everything. And now this is just the, this is the way it's going. And uh, I was debating putting this on as my other cool thing of the week was, uh, you know, virtual happy hours are happening now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So going along with the Zoom thing. You, you, and you spearheaded that. I'm not <laughs> saying we invented it, but we've kind of, should I drink that? And our friends with Tiki Bar TV and Brain Gravy and a lot of the, the older podcasts, we've kind of been doing it for 13 years, but mm. now it's cool <laughs> because we don't get out at night. So we would just naturally get online and, up until you know a few weeks ago, it was wow, you guys have no social life. This is weird. <laughs> and now it's hey, how do we get online and drink? <laughs> so that's what uh, that's what should I drink that as it was starting to tail off? All of a sudden, it's like getting more requests from people saying, "Hey, can you show us how to do a virtual happy hour?" So, so we'll see. Looking back at the Snapology website now, there's there's a good list of locations. Uh, looks like they have uh, at least three around Pittsburgh, east, mm-hmm. north, uh, south in the city. Um, and a few other locations as well. So it's it's it's, yeah, it's not just a thing. Pittsburgh thing. No, it's, no, no, it's all around. And it, and you can buy a franchise too. There's information for that as well. Dutters, what is your awesome thing of the week? Let's talk about TikTok. Yay! I have so, not, I am way behind on my TikToking. Oh yeah, you need to get up on this because so with everything that's going on uh, with the the COVID nineteen coronavirus and there's so many more people staying at home and you know less things to do. TikToks, if you start watching TikTok, you'll definitely, if you watched it before and watching it now, there's definitely a big change. Like one of the big changes, um, so originally, if you're not familiar with TikTok, a lot of it are dance challenges that people are doing or other random viral challenges and their own takes on things and just kind of weird, funny, short videos. Um, but if you, you're in, start watching t- TikTok now, you'll see a lot more of doctors and nurses, people on the front lines mm. talking about their lack of PPE, so, you know, the protection um, equipment, personal protection equipment. Uh, you also see a lot of families of people who are on the front lines talking about what they're, they're going through and um, kind of using this as a platform to spread, you know, this is what's actually happening. And um, they're also getting more heartfelt, more personal, uh, for example, one of the videos I watched last night was a video of a semi truck driving away with two little girls waving by. And the story was the woman took the video. That was her dad. And he was driving semi trucks back and forth from New York City. And he passed away from COVID-19. Yeah. So there, it's really putting a face on a lot of this. And it, it's really interesting. I like got a lot more personal, a little more like there's a lot of more videos that are a little bit harder to watch on there where it was really kind of like a escape for a lot of people but it's great because it's this is a way people are telling their stories and um we t- we've talked about it before the show but like on youtube but also on tiktok if you talk about covid19 or coronavirus they'll get the little bubble that pops up in the bottom for more information about so they're trying to keep the information um real and not spreading like fake things and then the other thing you'll notice about tiktok that's happening now is the demographics are starting to skew older because the millennials and the Gen X are at home now. And a lot of that generation, especially millennial generation tends to not have children um, because little more, not, I don't want to be, I don't want to say like they tend to have, there's, there's more without children than there are in older generations. Mm-hmm. So they're at home. They have nothing to do. You know, we were always on social media, like what the new thing is. So now we're all migrating to TikToks. There's a lot more older people on TikTok. There's um, like hashtags over 30, hashtags over 40. Um, so you're seeing a lot of um, old, like it's not just that uh, Gen. Oh, geez, what's the what's the age below the millennials? Gen the, Z. Um, is it Gen, yeah, Gen Z? Gen X. No, Gen X is Gen- up here. There, we're we're like Gen X and Gen, uh, millennials are like right around there. I need um, a, I need a chart. The Gen Z. Gen Z Gen is, I'm it is weird. up here. I'm, I'm considered a zennial. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you hear Missy? <laughs> she said it's Gen Z because she equates it to zombies. <laughs> <laughs> I will never speak ill of any generation in technology use because man, the things that we have done mm-hmm. with uh, technology <laughs> and what we do in the world has been very weird and we lucked out with a lot of it not ending up on social media because it wasn't as big of a thing when we were younger. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine the stupid crap we did on social media? Yeah, <laughs> none of us would have to. Oh, I'm very thankful that I, I mean, and, and I had a video camera, so it's like, I was like, oh, I captured a lot of that already. And really, could you imagine if that was streaming? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that would be a lot more concerning. So 
Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff happened on TikTok. I just kind of hopped into it here on on the iPad to see what's up. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, it's uh, it's 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 uh, quarantine views and everything. Miami quarantine, seeing how empty it is. So, um, yeah. so if you're like this is what you could learn from this. Like, if you're in marketing right now or you're a business right now, you may have thought I have no business being on TikTok because mm-hmm. the audience is too young. They wouldn't use my products. Blah blah whatever. Now you should have jumped on this. Is, this is another reason you need to jump on social media platforms early, even if you don't think it applies to your company right now, because it may change, you know, social media is constantly evolving. So like now TikTok, your audience may be on it and you are way behind at this point. Now, Dutters, I have a question when it comes to TikTok, because I, I get on there once in a while just to look at things and basically just find what my kids are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> well, when they, cause they say, well, we only use it to talk to friends. So have they, have they started to implement any kind of like parental restrictions or like, cause we know kids under 13 are using it or oh, kids yeah. under even eight, well, kids under 15 are using it too. And that's always been my concern with TikTok is that it's kind of a wild, wild West. Like uh, Snapchat was where, it, you know, anything goes. So I was wondering if they actually came out with like a, a kid's version or a kid's uh, like a, a, some kind of filter to put on all that with their yeah. rise in popularity. They don't have like, like Facebook Messenger has a kid's version, but they don't have like a TikTok kid's version, but they are implementing like a family safety mode. Okay. You have to link your TikTok account to your child's TikTok account. <laughs> so you have All to the kids are going to be up there safety. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, you'll have, the, so you'll set it up. Uh, it's called family safety mode. Uh, then your teen will scan a QR code from your phone and that'll, um, Essentially, you give them consent, and then at that point, you can limit screen time, messaging, restricted mode. You can block certain content. Um, But it looks like it's. Let's see, when was this article? Oh gosh, so I think yeah, it should be out for the U.S. now. Uh, Katie, uh, uh, Professor Buzzkill is out in the chat room, and he says, uh, uh, "Professor Buzzkill doesn't use TikTok. Should I join?" I'd say yes. Oh, absolutely. He would his content would be great on uh, TikTok because it would be short. It'd be short snippets of history within you know a minute time of just like da da da, and it could be great. And he always has great visuals too, so you could work those in. And I think people would find it interesting as long as you're you're kind of like go off strong in the beginning of mm-hmm. your video because a lot of people do this build up, and if you if the payoff or the build up isn't strong enough, I'm flipping quick, mm-hmm. and so is everybody else. So I mean, you just gotta kind of like go and uh but yeah his content would be great on there It'd be great little history snippets because people are looking for things to just like kind of get sucked into at this point and if you have interesting content and i'm kind of learning things hey double win yeah we need distractions mm-hmm. trick them into it right so my thing is so related because uh you know we're talking about and even thinking about professor buzzkill how does he make his content that vertical format to be tiktok and everything um so my awesome thing is quibi maybe some of you checked it out some of us got our uh sunday night notification that you could download the app this is the um, this is a fellow i think this is a guy from nbc that that got on top of this uh but it, it's an application it, it's going to be a 5.99 with ads or sorry 4.99 with ads 7.99 without ads um it's a video service for your phone it is five to ten minute videos and I mean, there's stuff on here like this. Flipped has um, uh, Will Forte and and uh, the girl that never remembers name, her name from uh, Always Sunny. Um, there's some other shows. Punked came back with Ch- Chance the Rapper. Uh, Singled Out is back on this as well. Um, there's a there, there's some suspense. There's some uh, game show uh, on here. Uh, some reality stuff. Some nature stuff. Um, and again, you know, it's, they put money into a lot of a lot of this content, right? WWE is going to have a show um, that's that's helping uh, young girls in trouble. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see. So here's the fun thing. So so you got this vertical bit, and let me go to a video. I followed a few of these. I, was, I checked out a, a couple things the other day. So like here's like a, a news one that the BBC puts out, right? So here's the fun thing. My awesome thing is not Quibi itself. I, the jury's still out on this as a service. I signed up for the 90-day trial. Everybody can sign up for a 90-day trial. If you're on the T-Mobile family plan, apparently, oh, something went wrong. Well, there's their first problem. The video won't play. Um, so, so if you, I think it has a problem. Oh, you know what the problem is? You don't have internet. No, the problem is because <laughs> here's the big thing with it: you cannot watch Quibi on a television. What? And since I have this plugged in through an adapter, 
I can't show you the video directly into the system because it shows as an out as a display and I really can't show you it. So the idea is <laughs> I'll just have to show you physically here. Um, you can watch things vertically. So punked, uh, you know, these, these sitcoms, these, these, uh, reality shows and news, whatever the case may be, they've done vertically and horizontally. And the interesting thing here. Is that actually playing? I don't know. It's just a picture of Boris, whatever his name is. Uh, there we go. There, there's a fellow on the BBC telling me the news. You can on the fly turn it on its side, and it's reformatting everything. Like there's a text screen that we're seeing here, and it's completely redone for vertical when you flip it. And it does it on the fly. You don't even notice any delay. And what's happening, they call this, I think it was called Slipstream. I don't have my article right in front of me. Um, they're actually streaming both versions of the video to you at the same time. You see, there's a more vertical. You see him directly. Where if it's wide, you're going to see the wide shot. So you from... can use you can use double your data. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was giving my question. <laughs> okay, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do this for you guys, so you can see it here. If you don't have the feed up um, in in our feed, um, but yeah, no. It's basically, uh, they said it's, it's like twenty percent more than what Netflix streams, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so it, there is more overhead, ideally. But again, it's it's five to you know like average. Everything seems to be about seven minutes. So the idea was, oh, I can watch this while I'm waiting for the bus or something, right? Now that we're inside and not waiting for buses and lines as much. I don't know how well that works right now. Uh, but they're, they're even saying like, oh, this is great if you want to take a break from whatever you're doing at the house. So that content is exclusive to that platform? Yes, 100% exclusive from the looks of it. Everything wow. that I've, I've heard of so far. So uh, if you want to get your, you know, speaking of throwback, if you want your single down and your punk to feel like it's the uh, late 90s, MTV again. So who's hosting Singled Out? Um, I did yeah. not recognize them. Did Jenny McCarthy need some cash and she uh, jumped no, on? No, no, it's definitely two new hosts. So um, let's see. It, 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 it was wild to watch Punked, and they were targeting an, a YouTube influencer because that's what Punked is. That's what the celebrity is these days. That that was weird <laughs> to me. No Ashton Kutcher in sight. Just um, just a. Uh, it is no, they don't. They don't list the hosts, and yeah, I don't recognize them. So what you were saying? What what's the ninety day trial? Is it a ninety day free trial, or yeah, is it ninety day free trial? Now here's the fun part: if you select the ads for ninety days, you'll have the one with ads for ninety days for free. <laughs> so select the one without ads. I don't think it allows you to do this apparently originally, um, but yeah, it, and it does it through the Apple Pay and everything. So you'll it, and they're usually really good about giving you reminders. Mm -hmm. when when they do that so um i i set a reminder for myself just in case like a week out just just be like oh yeah i gotta cancel that so um nothing is making me want to drop eight bucks on this four five bucks a month on this yet but it's again conceptually i think it's interesting and in my mind again kind of trying to look ahead i hope this format becomes a thing because i'm trying to figure okay if i did a video for quibi they'll never ask me to do something um how am I going to format things? How do you do the edit? How do you do the workflow? Because I think this is something that could catch on. This idea. Do you, do you think it's some kind of dual camera mount? No, like, no, no. Do you no, think no, they're no, doing no. it in post or do you no, think they're doing post. it up front? It is post. It is for sure post. Uh, watching punk punk the way that they would flip things. Um, it, it, like Sometimes they'll add an extra shot, like an extra wide shot along with a close shot because of the context of the shot. Okay. So, and, and the way they did it, it felt very janky. Like it doesn't feel natural. And, and even you, you can tell everything appears to be shot for wide when you're watching something, um, scripted and they just re-edited it for, um, vertical. vertical. The audio is the same track. It's just synced up with both of them. Very, and it just cues whichever one, depending on detecting that orientation. Now I'm excited cause you know, early on, I, I believe they were talking about their, some of the suspense or scary ones like would only allow you to watch it at night or with no lay on or something like that. So I'm, I'm waiting to see that kind of execution. Those are the things interesting, you know, what, and it may be gimmicky. It, it, it ideally will probably be gimmicky and who knows if anybody's going to care after the first watch. Right. So. Does it say if it's going to have like that net um, Netflix, almost a Netscape, geez, that Netflix <laughs> option. Where you can download shows because I'm yes. thinking like when we when yes. Jill and I ride the T in, mm -hmm. like we get one or two bars sometimes mm -hmm. on that because yeah. the T is terrible to, for a signal, so I have to it, download everything and then listen. In fact, downloads are one of the four things at the bottom of the screen. 
So nice. yeah, no, they're very they're very concerned about like yes, you can download and watch. I presume anything on this app. So that, that's cool because the, the other thing is with a with an eight to ten minute show, we could get three shows in on the way mm-hmm. to work and then yeah. three more on the way home. And that's why this is important. <laughs> and this is why this could actually work because you're exactly the audience that they're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. So. Now, if it could just give us the option for somebody's looking over your shoulder (laughs) while you're watching it on the T, that Mm -hmm. would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's Quibi. You can check it out. The apps are out there, I believe, on both uh, uh, iPhone and Android, uh, the iPhone version. Uh, So you can can check that out for free for 90 days and report back. Let me know. I'm really curious what your thoughts are are on that, too. Uh, Kitty, you have any thoughts on that? I mean, you've dealt with mobile video for a while yourself. I think this is this is a very complex thing that I'm thankful I don't have to deal with. Yay! <laughs> I'm thankful I could be a consumer on this one. Yeah, I, it's definitely for Not the high here. end. You know, I don't know. I don't know if TikTok's going to be um, uh, adapting it very well. But I'd love to see, like, uh, if I could put something out for YouTube that would adopt yeah. this. So, um, I'd be willing to format this show for it. You know, if, the, if that if it would help. I mean, we'll have to make a little quibbies because that's what they're trying to they're trying, trying to verb this thing like. I hold on, take me a quibby because that's what it's going to take to watch, I guess. Anyway, it's fun to say it is quibby. It's a fun word. It's like plutonium. <laughs> some, <laughs> some good, some good marketing there. Hey guys, also, also some good stuff, some good stuff to check out, especially as you're uh, uh, cooped up here in the Pittsburgh area, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. It can probably get you in the four corners of the Pittsburgh area. So please go check them out. It was great for them supporting the show, feeding our guests, and I'm trying to figure out some ways so we can feed our remote guests somehow uh, as well with it. So uh, stay tuned for that. We have some ideas. But anyways, um, go check them out. Our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com. Um, they are, uh, they've been busy. You guys have been uh, getting the mobile apps in, uh, get the mobile orders in and everything. Uh, so it sounds like they're, they got a lot of uh, great stuff going on there. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, we can't sit and watch the tea go by. But uh, soon, one day, we will get back to that. And have a we'll have to have our pizza pals again. All right, so giving a shout out to our buddy Chachi. He's still plugging away in his um in his in his hideaway across town uh, with the mobile games at thegamejourney.com. You can check that out over there. He's into WarioWare Twisted. Now I didn't get into WarioWare until we, and that was fun enough because you had to do really weird things with the uh, Wii controller. Uh, he's getting into some Castlevania, some of those uh, uh, Metroidvania games. And Contra, uh, again, still on the mo- mobile. So go check that out, thegamejourney.com. Give him a little plug over there. And then, uh, of course, we like to check out what's going on on the uh, on the Facebook group. Dave Ponder had a couple of stories here. Uh, this was one that was interesting. And I tried to get my wife into it today, and she was not downloading it. Um, Apple released a couples-only app. Not a what? dating app. Not I didn't a, hear about this. Not a dating app. He just he, he just dropped it like midday today. So apparently, hold on, let me get this over and get some visuals for you guys on video. Um, so it, I'm sorry, Facebook. Facebook launched it. It's an experimental tuned app, T-U-N-E-D, iOS chat app for couples. So there's you can do like a daily diary and exchange things through this app directly. Um, so you can be connected even when you're apart. Of course, I texted to How my wife. How are you apart? What? I mean, I'm trapped in the same house for weeks now. How? <laughs> I know. Talk about timing on this thing. Yes. <laughs> okay. If we're looking at the description in here, it says for boyfriends and girlfriends who may be confined in houses separate from their own. Yeah, it was, it was not, not us. Uh, okay. that we are, we, listen, everyone here is stuck with their significant other, whether they like it or not. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just... <laughs> I said whether they like it or not. I'm saying that as a flat thing. But, uh, but uh, no, you know, so obviously this is for other couples and other situations. Actually, I, I know this has been, because we've had a lot of people on like the wrestling uh, cast and, and we just have these round tables about like so how are you dealing with things and and some of them are separated across town or, or something from their significant or across states actually in some cases so um so this is for them we need to send this to those people uh to, to our friends there so um so sending this to beast man mm-hmm. 
I should actually explain myself before I just sent him a text with this application. That could get a little weird. Um, anyways, so I want to see a log between Beastman and and uh, Honey Badger. <laughs> Well, there's that. Uh, so. I, I want to see. I I really want to see what that that conversation would be. Like. That would be amazing if there was a. We could screen cap it. Uh, the wrestlers just yeah, wrestling pairings. Um, their actual significant others may be upset with that, but otherwise, uh, so it'd be great content for a show. It would be great content for a show. Hey, there's been there's been this 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 um. We, there, there's actually been conversations trying to get this one wrestler to do. A um a uh, uh uh you know, Lee finds love. I was apex of love. They were calling it because he's the apex of combat. Uh, so, still still trying to gun him for that. So we we have a whole quarantine to try to talk him into it. He might be just where he just be, might be just ready to do anything once we get done with this thing. You mean respawn and EA or yeah EA hasn't come down on him yet for using the word apex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Doug, I did download Apex and I have it on Nvidia G, uh, now. G- GeForce now, so I'm ready to play whenever you're up for it. So <laughs> good, good timing because they just had the latest patch came out. There you for go. Me. It's it's insane right you, now. You can help me not get killed all the time. So does Apex do? Does it do cross platform? No. Okay. Oh. That's one of the biggest issues with it right now because I have two accounts and I go back and forth between a PS and a Xbox. Well, I it got, drives me nuts. I got I got it on Xbox and PC ready to go. So this is one I didn't look at this video just yet, but Dave said it. Uh, Ponder said it, so I, I'm I'm down with it. Uh, so an Italian mayor uses a drone to scream profanities at residents, <laughs> ignoring the <laughs> lockdown. Uh, we've had the videos of the mayors from Italy just being amazing. Where the f are you going? Go home. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a drone that talks to you like this. So this is their down. They're running now. They are running from the drone. <laughs> By order of the mayor. <laughs> the you need mayor. Triumph, the comic insult dog, to do this. Yes, yes. You look like you're going for a great walk for me to poop on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. This is over at um, what is it, commercialdroneprofessional.com is the website for this. So, oh, good. Italy, you know, Italy's dealing with some serious stuff out there, but the responses and how they're handling are innovative insult and explanative written and just entertaining for the rest of us uh so so go check out that video if you got with us on audio in our in our show notes thank you dave ponder for uh those wonderful stories here um hey also some great stuff going on we've getting a lot of calls over the last week people um um figuring out their streaming product uh it was streaming streaming problems i guess um figuring out how to uh, get going in this uh, time of change how to keep uh, their business going how to keep uh talking to their um their 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 congregations even so um i've, I've, I've talked to at least a couple of churches already and, and uh, looking forward to, to helping some more people out. Um, that's over at sidekickmediaservices.com. That's our in-house production uh, uh, work here at Sorgatron Media uh, between video production, a lot of streaming, a lot, a lot of streaming and podcasting and figuring out remote podcasting with our clients lately. And of course, uh, so much more. Please go check out everything. Sidekickmediaservices.com. Let's be the sidekick in your superhero project. All right. What do you guys want to get into news-wise? Katie, you got anything in, the, in here? I, there's a lot of Animal Crossing in the news. Oh, I saw that. I, yeah, I, I, want, I want to talk about your uh, Hyrule re, uh, recreated in Animal Crossing. That was impressive. Yeah, so, that so, was so cool. I, I, I'm trying to figure out. So, like, you know, again, I don't know. I, I've only played iOS Animal Crossing, so I don't have the high-functioning version of this. So... Um, but they so is there a Minecraft element to, element to this or something? You, it's, you get a l- little bit more like as you move along and you, you there's there's several tasks you have to complete. You have to be pretty decently far along in the game, mm-hmm. but you start getting the option to um, they call it terraforming, where you can kind of cut away different areas. It costs a ton of money to do it in there, or a ton of bells to do gosh. it in the game, but <laughs> you um, you can definitely do stuff like this. Jeez, so so it is an entire um, island of Animal Crossing, like somebody's personal island, I presume, um, mm-hmm. where they 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 formed it to the overworld map of Legend of Zelda Three on the Super Nintendo. That's so cool. That seems right. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> that has got to be. And there's a there's a little tour video for this as well. 
so you can go um, on a little video tour, <laughs> a half an hour video tour <laughs> of Hyrule. That's great. Now I want them to do a 3D version of Link to the Past. Can we just do it? Like, can we just take the models from Animal Crossing and make make a Link to the Past on the uh, on the on the Switch or something? That seems to make a lot of sense. That'd be really cool. So, any other uh, Animal Crossing updates uh, this week? How how's your island going? Oh, it's going very well. I just kind of got into the point where I can do this stuff now. I'm mm-hmm. very cool. I've uh, completed a bunch of tasks that were annoying me that I finally finished and got caught up to where I feel my friends are because <laughs> I felt like I was falling behind. Uh, it was funny because I'm like, oh, I'm spending a lot of time playing Animal Crossing. And then I see like my brother's world in his island. And I'm like, no, I'm not playing a lot of time <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> a lot of contextual. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's super cool and yeah yeah nothing crazy exciting with uh maybe next week I'll try to figure out something fun for next week. <laughs> uh, Chilla, what do you want to touch on here? Um, d- 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 so I'm um, sorry the 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 five G burning of five G towers. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just have to mention it. Um, <laughs> sorry. Bless you. Thank you. Um, you. so in, in I think it's the UK has pleaded with citizens, um, to please stop setting fire to 5g cell phone towers. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a rumor that started, I think back in January around 5g towers could, could cause um, autoimmune disorders. They could cause people to get sick. Then it kind of spun up to, it was the cause of coronavirus. Um, some people even like it was Woody Harrelson said that it was it was it was potentially causing um people to get sick more frequently or something like oh, that. So Woody. like movie stars and people latched onto this. Now this is back in like February. Okay. Um or maybe early March. There there I can't remember. I couldn't find for the for the show tonight who actually had the historical timeline of events and hoax goings on about the the 5g towers so 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 kind of this started in february but as things exponentially got worse around it it kind of elevated everything from then yes to the point where now arsonists are Mm. setting fire to 5g towers Mm. um all over the uk from what from what it sounded like yeah yeah (laughs) which can you imagine in today's i mean in today's world, if if you couldn't get well, I guess we're all at home, so hopefully most of us have Wi-Fi. But if you didn't have Wi-Fi, and you you just lived on your internet off your phone, could you imagine blacking out whole areas? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. their towers burned. What a weird additional issue to be dealing with on top of everything else. I, that 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 was like I said, it was just maddening when I saw that like just come through the news scroll. It was like you know. Everything else is is just a messed up thing to read, and then you just you read that. I'm just like that made me stop because <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. Uh, well, it was funny. I pulled up Facebook. Chilla mentioned this before the show, and mm-hmm. I pulled up my Facebook, and I was scrolling through my feed, and somebody had posted the picture of why do they need to wear full hazmat suits when they're setting up the five G towers, like that Google photo that got around. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, oh, come on. Oh, seriously? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, on a lighter note, if you get a chance to check it out, um, Apple Clips now has mouse and trackpad support. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so you can have some high-level um, Instagram clip making, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's good. Hey, it's a handy app. So, um, Doug, any of these stories in the lineup uh, you want to touch on for sure? Oh, I'm trying to get over this whole burning of the towers thing because we're basically <laughs> going back to live in the 90s. Not that I complain because I love the 90s. Well, yeah. And I, and I want to see all of you wearing flannel and listening to Pearl Jam again. Don't make me bust out my flannel. I Granted, I still listen to Pearl Jam and they just had a new CD come out. Listen, Check it. flannel flannel <laughs> followed up by the Hot Topic Jinko jeans were like the most oh, comfortable gosh. period. Let's be honest about this. As long as we don't go to frosting our hair at the turn of the next decade, then we're, we'll be fine. Like the boy. Uh, my hair is naturally frosting. So we're already there. <laughs> uh, I did actually, um, Dutters, I want to steal one of your things because it okay. was something that's been on my mind. <laughs> okay. Facebook. 
What Redesigning the everything. What, whoa, 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 whoa. So not only that, and I, th- I think I just oh. commented in the Slack, it might, the bottom of my Facebook has changed yes. four times in the last two days. Mm-hmm. When my navigation goes from here down to there. Oh, I didn't get that yet. <laughs> you're messing with me. So that, that was for Android users. Um, okay. We've, oh. always had, we've always had our navigation at the bottom. So... So there's that. Missy jumped into the the uh, the new Facebook. Was that on web? You were doing that, and and I just Dark been mode. hearing swearing at Facebook like more than usual, like different words, right? Well, what I don't get with it is so it's, they did the like the I don't even call it the soft lips. They're like randomly rolling this out to people. So I got this notification on my profile that says you have the new profile, and I'm looking. I'm like. Well, there's a lot of white space. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah. And and then I, um, then on the Yinsla barbecue, it says that your profile has been upgraded. I'm like, okay. So I'm looking at it, and on the left where they have the options for different menu, you know, menu items to pick from for your page, I click on one and it says this page has not been configured yet for Facebook beta. I'm like, wait. <laughs> So is my Whoa. page working or not? So now, now you have potentially, it's telling you that your page is potentially not accessible for a percentage of people on Facebook. Using their template. What the hell? This is a like bad, standard bad JavaScript and I'm on a MySpace page. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have like your, your intern pushing out your dev environment to live. And they go, eh, oh well, see what happens. I'm like, nothing is working. This is what I, like. Are other people seeing this? Am I the only person who sees this? Ah, it's it's driving me nuts. And it hasn't happened to any of the like corporate pages that I run, mm-hmm. but it, it happened to the the Yinslow Barbecue and my personal one, and it just, it made me so twitchy. I I had to send a message to my boss and, and say, look, Facebook's doing stuff. Um. I don't know if it'll happen to us, but I'm giving you a warning. I can't fix it <laughs> because it's saying that I don't, it's something's not formatted. Right. And we are using the standard business template on almost everything. So they wow. need to quit screwing with stuff in production yeah. because it's not like we're not raging enough as it is. Well, one of but my it, friends uh, owns the weeping glass up in Allentown. And she was commenting about the fact that there was no share, but no share on her page. And I realized what she was talking about was she had just hadn't configured the button yet to go to, to like shop now for her website. So I was typing like instructions on how to do it. And I'm at the doctor's and I pull up my Facebook app because I know she doesn't use pages. And I'm going, I don't even know what to tell her to do. <laughs> Cause like, mm-hmm, I, couldn't, mm-hmm. I was like, where are the settings at? I was like, I, I, then I remembered she does most of her stuff on her on a computer and not as much on her phone. So I knew she might be a little bit easier for her. But I was at least as, as long as I gave her the right words, I figured she, in worst case scenario, she could have Googled it. Mm-hmm. But it was just like, uh. <laughs> well, and the other problem is when you have an issue, like when I, I, I have a question about like, you know, recently just live streaming questions, video questions, things like that. And you're going to get an answer from like three versions ago. Mm-hmm. And they haven't updated them, or at least the one on Google does not come up. So it's just like, wait, is this the now Facebook? Is this Facebook from three years ago? Like, where where does this apply? Google has this problem as well, especially with the new YouTube uh, Creator Studio. But it has been mostly like you you still have the classic, but even though they warn you that classic is going away, and I still haven't seen half of the features that I use, so that is concerning me a lot. But, the the big thing I have with Facebook now also is so I I go to based out of habit I would go to my page I click post video you know out of your options there mm-hmm. and then it says you should use the publishing tool okay you mean creator click, stu- creator studio oh not even creator studio it says you should use the publishing tool so you click publisher and you see a list of all your content mm-hmm. I'm like okay I want to post a video you should use creator studio. <laughs> And I'm like, I can't upload a video. I just, uh, oh, I, I like, default, I default to Creator Studio, but linking the Instagrams like that makes it a lot easier for me too. Uh, that and Crosspost. So though, weirdly, I have an account that I post videos, link it to Crosspost for their account, and they're like, we can't post this. So I'm like, it keeps getting me an error. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go post it for you. I, you know, I didn't want to take control from you to do that. You know, so. I'm um, getting used to using Creator Studio, and I have it bookmarked now just it's because it's been. It's getting better. When it first came out, you could only do video with it, and it was mm-hmm. telling you to do. You're telling you to do pictures, yep. but you couldn't. You had to do video. Now you can do everything in there. So it, yeah. it actually once it, it's it's gotten to that point where it's kind of nice to live in. 
Um, so for me, it's nice because I get the cross post. So I say, okay, Creator Studio, Creator Studio, YouTube, Hootsuite, so I can schedule a tweet. I like that I, I can now post multiple. I can make a, basically a, the, the slideshow and Instagram from their app. Yes. Yes. Because that is my biggest pet peeve, especially if I have a lot that I'm doing for clients or whatever. I, I, I don't want to have to keep uploading it to my phone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because and that's just pain that's where uh if you notice on mayhem show like we've been doing our, our fun mayhem mania uh fantasy booking and and great great graphics from the wrestling revolution uh dot com and uh and, and yeah i'll put four in there in, in the slideshow and it's like i don't want to transfer this to my phone and do the whole thing most of the facebook stuff or instagram stuff you can do from there for the most part so it's been kind of nice so well they launched everything and then furloughed the rest of their staff so <laughs> Yeah. So we're kind of stuck for a while. Is what you're saying this is going to get Oops. fixed real soon, huh? It's kind of like the issue that I've had with Verizon, where you no longer get support until like Thursday nights at eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And when you do, you're in the queue for an hour because, hey, uh, my router's not working right. But oh, I've been trying to get through to AT and T to cancel the two iPads that I'm currently not traveling and need. So, yeah. Can you can you, Facebook or Facebook AT and T? Can you just use the AT and T app? Uh, not the cancel. They want you to call, and I was able to do it before on the chat, but the chat has been unavailable probably because they're so over mm. with everything. So, yeah, and I I'm afraid to call and see what that line that that busy line is going to be. All right, let's so real go. quick, yeah, please give quick. me hopefully some good news. No, real quick, something. So with the whole Facebook stuff and all this, you know, like being confused, the best answer is Facebook groups. Mm. Find other social media Facebook groups. Find the mm. Facebook ad buying groups. Find the TikTok oh, marketing idea. secret groups. Go to those groups. Like specifically, there are so many groups that specifically deal with like vid- videos in Facebook or just ad buying in Facebook who have gone through all of this okay. and have people, they all, everybody, you know, they'll post a question. People will post feedback. Okay. And then you're you're able to go, oh, okay, this is what's happening. I've gotten so much information from Facebook groups mm. because Facebook does not the the support from actual Facebook is but Facebook groups, join them, find them, especially if you need help with learning things like TikTok, join the marketing uh, as a TikTok uh, secrets group that I've learned so much from. They should use you as the commercial for Facebook groups because the commercial on TV where it's like the people the rock skippers. Make, yeah. <laughs> Like yours is way more useful. <laughs> is yeah, this why Jones doesn't call me anymore? Yes, I don't need you. I'm over you. I, I have a bunch of people on the interwebs who are my friends. <laughs> I I do want to give like some positive credit to to all the teachers that are out there right now trying to figure out how to do online schooling yes. for all of our students because what what they've been able to pull off, at least from what I've seen, is nothing short of a miracle, mm-hmm. and it is. Absolutely amazing that online schooling was, you know, something you would talk about in high schools, but you didn't see it at like the elementary school levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, just speaking from what I've seen from our school, I mean, they they've pulled off a completely 100 percent online schooling. It's kind of pieced together. And I I'm not going to begrudge them for that because, holy crap, non-technical people figured this out in a week. But, you know, kudos to any teacher out there that's figured out how to use Zoom, how to use Google Meet and Google Classrooms effectively. I just want to give a, a shout out to them because you're you definitely make a, make it easier for a lot of parents out there that are like, what am I going to do with my kids? Oh, my God, we could be here for the rest of the school year. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also kudos to all the businesses who are giving out like free ebooks and any kind of free resources because mm-hmm. uh, we're all in the same boat. I mean, no one's looking to, you know. This, the swinging deals or we just we all need help right now and if you can pull it off effectively you're going to gain a lot of customers out of this too i'm not saying that's the only reason to do it but people notice like if you have a good platform <laughs> if you're a business and can provide something in, the, in this time of need that's just like that's that's you being a good neighbor and that that goes a long way that absolutely yeah. goes a long way so um, you know, those kind of still holding everything to the vest. It was like, uh, you're, you're not going to get out of this, you know, as your sales are already probably plummeting. Right. So the people will notice, Hey, other companies are doing things. So I went on a Tesla kick, kick this week. Um, I, I, you know, it, one topical and one, um, uh, outside, 
Um, there was a video I came across. This is from a little bit ago. Mar- Marquez Brownlee. I've been uh, digging in. He was on Twitter a few weeks ago, and I've been digging into his YouTube channel. It's a lot of um, – he shoots in like 8K or something, I think. Uh, it, it, and it's basically product review videos, and I've been really enjoying um, – this kid is like, I don't know, 26 and played the Sega Genesis for the first time in the Game Boy and pulled out a uh, original Macintosh uh, and, and unboxed it with uh, Justine. Hi, Justine. Uh, so, like, like things like that. So, I've been having fun. So, I haven't, I haven't looked at his newer um, um, reviews so much, but I did follow his tour of Tesla with Elon Musk and his interview with him. And in it, the cool thing, it, but that's not the awesome thing. The awesome thing is I discovered, and this is old news if you follow Tesla, I didn't realize that the robots, they name after X-Men. Hmm. The, the the robots in their factory that'll that'll you know move the cars and everything so that was cool also they did a a behind the scenes video about you know we, we hear about especially car manufacturers are um converting to do respirators or masks or whatever the case may be. i think mostly respirators for the car manufacturers um tesla actually uh, had a video showing how it was building ventilators um using actual model three parts in New York, because I think one of the thing is one of the things is like you can you can use you can retool and use these to to make ventilators, but you still need to get all the parts right. So they're just like, hey, we have all these Model Three parts. Can we make something out of this? And they made an entirely new uh, ventilator out of um, like like I think it was shown the carburetor, the uh, 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 you know things like that part uh, in part of it. And there's a video that's uh, going to be linked in the notes. So you can you can follow that whole process. So that was kind of cool. Um, if you're more of a car or tech you know, uh, manufacturing junkie, you make it a little more out of it than maybe I did, but you know, it was just kind of cool to see the process there. I just love watching geeks geek out about things, even if I don't understand that thing. So you know, if there was any group that was going to do it, it would be Tesla. Oh yeah. I would, I would absolutely expect it. And also not only is it going to be a ventilator, but it'll probably fly you to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> like, those, those guys are just such geniuses over there. Send them everywhere. Send them everywhere. Right. So uh, go check that out. Anything you guys want? Anything else you guys want to touch on here on the way out the door? I think it's all the big stuff for the most part. Um, good to see Uber has um, retold their service. Um, obviously, Uber Eats is, is is a nice pivot for people that were doing Uber drives, um, but they also built a tool that's called I think it's Uber Work. And I'll load it up here um, to help drivers. Um, uh, uh, find work with other companies. So, really? so that was that. Was, it's just kind of like a, a job connector with them. Um, it's a it's it's got a work hub situation, and of course, it's going to pimp them to del- to deliver with uh, uh, eats, but also um other companies. And they're, they're, that was that was kind of a good thing, and, and this was mentioned somewhere else. It had me think about it. No matter what you think of Uber, like they're doing good things now. Again, this goes a long way now, right? So, um, whatever is it company- like? Is it like what LinkedIn does, where it like looks at you and looks at companies that are looking for workers in your area? Or- it's 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 sharing openings with companies like McDonald's, FedEx, UPS. So so like all Pepsi, Hertz, Walgreens, like all these companies are obviously getting a big like bump from everything because of the mm-hmm. shift. Uh, uh, as well you know it, it's kind of like you know some people i've been talking about it's like hey you know i need to do something it's like well amazon's hiring they just sent a card to like probably everybody in the city here for amazon jobs right and i guess they got a bunch of them um everybody else is boning up you know between the grocery stores and everything else um who else was hiring a lot walmart was hiring more to handle the the influx that they've had because they've been i mean that's where everybody has to go somewhere and now i can't hit a button and order my stuff from amazon you know, you just took that out. So, it's been interesting to see. Oh, we got we got some movement. We got some movement. <laughs> I, I I love I love the look. Like when you're uh, when, when when you're doing when you're doing like a business call or a podcast and somebody busts in the door, it's the same look as if you're doing something you weren't supposed to. <laughs> I had the door jimmied so well that like he had to put his shoulder into it that the really. Get that thing open. That's right. That's and right. he looked ticked off. So I'm willing to bet that he just got into a fight with either his mom or his brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so it sounds like we need the show to last at least another 45 minutes for no, you. We can keep saying. going. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out of Rita's. Dang. Oh, well, Doug, well, plug what's going on out there. You got, you got some projects you've been working on. 
Uh, yeah, actually, so the uh, I was all set to start really rocking and rolling with uh, Yen's Love Barbecue and Yen's Love BBQ dot com, and uh, with the with most of the establishments uh, like not being open or you, know, you can't go there and sit down, that kind of really put a damper on you know being able to go out and do interviews. But from talking to them, a lot of them have set up uh, pickup services, takeouts, and delivery. So uh, probably within the next week, I'm hoping. I'm going to have a full list of all the barbecue places in the greater Pittsburgh area where you could go and uh, pick up barbecue Thanks. and help support the, the locals. Um, a couple of the guys I've spoken with have said that they will actually walk it out to your car. So you don't even have to get out of your car. Nice. And there's only like a couple people working at each of the establishments. So it's, I mean, they, they, they're doing their best to, you know, for food safety, uh, for, you know, COVID safety uh, to make sure that you, you get the food that you want. Um, Besides that, I, I've also been on this parenting podcast that seems to be seems to have popped up. What? What? Uh, with an open invite for this Thursday, I might have to join in, especially if I've got people barging in my room right now, so I can hide up here. I've been trying to put a good word in to get chilly in on this thing. Yeah, and I got a DM, and I got to get. Unfortunately, the last two weeks with work have been bad. I, I owe him. I owe Matt a, a DM. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully not this Thursday, but next Thursday, if he has an opening, awesome. I'd like to be on the show. It is Thursday at 9 p.m. And we are talking about listen to your parents. You can follow that on Facebook. Uh, that's where the live stream is happening. And of course, uh, we, we are putting the podcast out uh, on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed. If you're subscribed to that on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, and of course, you can go to sorgatronmedia.com to get links to that as well and play that back. So yeah, that's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I was on the, their first show and then listening to the last few. It's it get some really good, honest conversation in there, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. which is what I, I think you don't get a lot of on social media because there's just there's so many people that are critiquing everything that you say. This is now parents sitting down, having a, a drink, and just mm-hmm. like chilling out and, and being parents, which is great because we don't get to go out and see people. <laughs> anymore besides our kids and it's not just pittsburgh like uh, uh it, we we have some some participants from buffalo i think yeah. we had some people from ohio the first week uh we had uh tina who we know from the wrestling mayhem show uh joining us from the seattle area and she's yeah uh, uh you know, doing, she's still going to work a very important frontline job so uh it was interesting because you know somebody who saw everything first before we did while we were still drinking Corona beer and kind of like laughing it off a little bit. Uh, literally we were doing that. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, so it was kind of, a, it was a really good discussion that they were having over there. So please go check that out. Uh, Dutters is doing Hi. Dutters things. You can follow Dutters things. You've been sharing uh, important information too. I try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Instagram, Kate Marie PGH. Um, that, yeah, that's where most of my stuff and what's going on with me and stuff and things. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And of course, John Chichilla. Chilla on the Twitter is John Chichilla on the Facebook. There you go. Thank you, producer Missy, for hanging out, doing the notes, keeping everybody informed, and giving me looks when I go off script. Uh, mm-hmm. And of course, thank you, everybody. It's been great to have you guys in the chat room, have you guys over on the Facebook group. Please go check out everything out. Please follow, give a like, and share, a review. Uh, just share the show. Help help, help other people disco- discover the awesome cast. Some people may have a little bit extra time on their hands. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.